What happens when you mix funny future tech people with a prison dome in space? Oh, okay, that's mildly surprising. Welcome to Aberration, the place that's pretty f***ed up, I guess. I survived there with my tribe on Journey's Core for 65 days. Speaking of which, come join my Patreon, link below, and you too can join Journey's Core. Nonetheless, we had a lovely time trying desperately to gear up, gather all the tributes, and ultimately kill the boss by the end. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Welcome back to Journey's Core, where my tribe and I once again went through the motions of Ark, except this time with a twist. Compared to the island and Scorched Earth, Aberration is a broken and malfunctioning Ark, where the majority of it is underground in a giant cave system. So strap on in and get ready for some cool cave action. If you end up liking this video, go ahead and smash the button of the like, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Day one began as we had just transferred our characters fresh from the hot, terrible desert of Scorched Earth. We awoke on Aberration, FINALLY, and immediately I saw a glowy note and tried to get it. Then Nacho reminded me that I needed day chill a day. Got the note, and I found Nacho within the first 30 seconds of waking up, basically. I made the Aberration version of our tribe, Project Core, still just named Project Core, and invited Nacho. Then I invited Screen, made both of them admin as usual, and I got Beans in the tribe, who somehow already had a bulb dog. Cheater. Went ahead and got Shell in the tribe, but then we found a basilisk, as you do in the portal room for some reason. This literally happens every single time I spawn in the portal room at the start of any aberration playthrough. They're not too hard to outrun though when you're like level 111. Eventually through the chaos, Nacho got Tyler in the tribe and, oh god, shrooms. Uh, hey, by the way, when you're tripping, like I was here, eat agaravic mushrooms. They combat the debuff that these specific red shrooms in the fertile region give you. Just start inhaling the agaravic and you'll be good if you eat enough. Anyway, we got Kelsier in the tribe and I started to get some resources so I could make a pick. We found a tamed reaper, owned by one of our allies, and they flexed on us with their tech and rock drakes, making us very jealous. Fuzzy gave us a greeting, forming an alliance, and then left us to fed for ourselves. Eventually, we started leaving the portal room and exploring into the vast caverns of the fertile region. We got to the edge of that metal cliff and hopped off into the lake, a perfectly safe activity. Got some more gear, did this cool dodge away from a raptor, which you can do by the way if you press space at the right time and you spam it. HIDE! I made some bolas out of the raptor and went ahead and killed the entire local population. We went ahead and made some hide armor and things were looking pretty good. We were heading along but unfortunately got stopped by a wall of behemoth gates someone made. Thanks a lot guys. <laughs> Eventually, we wandered to a new area with a gas vein. Nacho had gotten the gas vein debuff, which looked like he was going f***ing Super Saiyan. And then we decided to start building our base in this spot here. It took a lot of farming, but eventually, after smacking a lot of rocks and a ton of trees, picking a lot of bushes, I got something up and we logged off for the night, ready for what the next day had in store. The next day, Screen and I went out with a pretty crappy level 83 Ravager we had tamed named Crystal to go find some metal. I took out my glow stick and we headed in that direction. We got to the metal spot I'd been trying to reach, but some ally structures there were preventing a majority of it from respawning, and so we only got a little bit. We headed on back to base and Jesus Christ, I have 10,000 hours and I'm still getting shroomed out of my mind every five minutes. Anyway, we made it back to base, deposited our metal, and I made this little upper doorway thing to fit the Ravager in. It looked a little weird, but it worked surprisingly well. I then went ahead and started expanding the base a little bit off to the sides so we'd have some more room. Now we had a gas vein near our base, but couldn't make a collector yet, so I had the idea of heading over to one we'd seen earlier on and I took the Ravager with me. Grabbed some gas, just in case we needed it, and headed on back to base. Alright, so I decided that I was going to build a very large fenced-in area. This was going to end up being very time consuming, so get ready. Kelsier had a little shack here, but it was in the way of where I'd built the wall, so I dragged him away and demolished it. Sorry, Kelsier. Got an HLNA note in between farming, a load of thatch and fungal wood, and I got this behemoth gate down. At some point, I realized we needed oil, so I made the decision to journey up to a surface entrance during the night. I chose a particularly bad one, being the one right next to the portal room. After traveling up there, making a zipline and heading down, this happened. They're mate boosted! Oh, that's a, nope. I'm getting out of here. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. I need to find this I have ember and I have candle. Hi, Reapers! Hey there. Hi, Eddie! Oh. Just starts talking. Oh, God, I broke the zipline! 
Oh no. Oh, I'm toast. Ravager's toast. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did we learn? Don't take Ravagers onto the surface, especially if they're only level 120. Also, that surface area just sucks. Anyway, I remade some gear and kept working on the walls, deciding to try and get oil another time since it was daytime at that point anyway. I put a little too much faith in our base by attacking a Spino and then running inside. It, uh, did this. <laughs> what is it doing? Oh my god. So I killed it, chopped it up, and continued the wall. And with that, I pretty much finished up day two. Day three started and I used our newly tamed Paraceratherium to gather berries and defend the area from these damn Spinos. Made some narcotics, farmed more stone, you can never have enough of that, and then I decided to head out to the surface for round two. This time I headed to the northeast entrance which was a little bit safer and got a decent haul of oil. We found a 145 aberrant dire bear nearby and knocked it out. Then Nacho pulled up. <laughs> After expanding the base a little bit and building a fabricator, I made some more boxes, bookshelves, and things were getting real sophisticated. Kept working on the wall, killed this crab with our pariser. He's a freaking god, apparently. And I got some more metal on a long journey up into the higher areas of the fertile region. Eventually, I got around to making a pipe, and with that, I was done for the night. Day three, complete. I logged on a couple of days later on day 7, and found that my tribe had progressed quite a lot. I started off the day by doing this. <laughs> you, you fly lower to the ground. I was streaming at the time and started doing that same training dummy thing I did on Scorched Earth when people did super chats, so I made one for Zev Hunter and later many more. Then I went up to the metal place on the high up ledges, gathered and cooked it on up as usual. Now at this point, Nacho and Shell were actually getting around to taming Megalosaurus, and so Screen and I went down into the bioluminescence zone. That felt really badass, gliding down like this, GPS and map in hand. That is, until I flew oh. into the freezing spores. Luckily, I was able to snarf down a bunch of aquatic shrooms to negate the effect. We were taming a 140 female and 120 male, and I gave some raw mutton to each of them. Once we tamed them, I realized I didn't have any cryopods, so we walked them all back to base. Turns out these things are fucking insane. <laughs> oh, now he's a carried monkey. He's a very dead monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Once we got back to base, I realized we had a roll rat at this point named Sassy, and I took her out to get some wood for even more structures and stuff and things, and you get the idea. With that, I was getting pretty tired, so I said my goodbyes and logged off for the night. Day nine was gonna be when we'd go down into the depths to finally get some rock trick eggs. But before we did that, Screen and I went out for some metal farming with this bad boy, our apparently level 225 blue Carquinos, which the tribe had tamed as I was offline. And turns out picking up an Anki with a crab, at least while someone is riding it, is very annoying, especially on slopes and when you're jumping. We then got some gems and crystal and loads of stone, and shortly after that we all geared up, brought a megalosaurus with us each, and headed on over to our ally who had a tech teleporter that we were able to use in order to effectively fast travel down into the molten element region without having to glide down to it or walk our megalosaurus down. It saved us a bit of time, which was nice. I found out that plant species Z actually exists down in this region, which I somehow feel like I never realized. Anyway, we cry out our megalosaurs and decided to glide down the rest of the way, all the way down into the home of the rock drakes. This part was fun. I mean, gliding down in general is just fun, but it feels especially badass when you're gliding down into such a cavernous and massive, as well as extremely dangerous place. We glided all the way over to this place where we'd just chill for a little bit and kept heading down. Once we got to the bottom, we deployed our Megalosaurus and started looking for eggs, wiping out any rock drakes that stood in the way of our progress. We also brought a Spino, Wang, down and things were getting pretty intense with the number of drakes after us. I then spotted an egg and decided to head up to it. This is a 20. Grab it anyway. Yeah, there's still kibble. Oh, uh, oh what? What? Nine twice? Yeah. Huh. So, I tried climbing up, and despite the fact that our servers don't have mesh protection settings on, my character was destroyed for attempting this. I literally just tried to climb up, and the game decided to delete me, and all my stuff, and my light pad. Thanks. I was actually completely unfazed at the time, which is a little strange. <laughs> but that was not the end, though. I immediately made new hazard and headed back down as fast as I could. 
I didn't care how dangerous the trek, I glided down like a f***ing sugar glider and made it all the way down there unscathed. Once I got there, I decided to grab an egg on foot, but ultimately glitched my glider, or in other words, pulled a bad maneuver, and was slaughtered by a rock drake. Terrible. Uh, are you okay? Uh, no. I'm going to die. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> So as you do, I gear back up again and flung myself down as fast as I humanly could, but this time, I joined up with the others and tried to actually be useful. Got back on my megalo, but not for long because we cryoed them and attempted to glide across the element lake and find a way up. We made it back up the path with relatively little issue, and with rock drake eggs that the others had collected in ours and our megalo's inventories. Then we used the moist noodles teleporter to get back home conveniently. We brought some new friends back with us, including this Parasaur, Iguanodon, and Dodo. Once we got back to base, I made some extra training dummies for Super Chatters and got that Dodo tamed up, which we named Donald Dodo as per a request from chat. But with that, we laid down some eggs next to ACs, and I logged off for the night, happy with the progress that we'd made. The next day I was on, day 11, Screen and I went down into the Rock Drake trenches again to go find some more eggs. At this point, Nacho and the others had raised at least a few drakes, but I hadn't yet, so I took one down named Wisp, which was really low level, and we glided into the trenches. We used this trick where we'd basically get the eggs to respawn in a certain area by going to and from this bridge over and over again, which I guess would mean we entered and left the zone refreshing the eggs and the drakes, if I understand that correctly. We did this until we had a decent number of them and with decent levels too. This nest respawned an egg and then respawned it again right in front of me. Ark taketh, but it also giveth. Kind of. <laughs> we went back home and I started getting an egg or two AC'd up so that I could eventually get a rock drake of my own and one that was decent level. Beyond the fact that we had some pretty sweet walls and a large area, our base was filled with tames, which meant that it was starting to feel a little cramped. I ended up streaming later that day, but in the process, I accidentally made my screen black for like four hours or something. <laughs> nice one, man. Luckily, because I streamed, it meant that I have all the footage technically in my stream playlist up on my channel, which you can find here, just a little lower quality. The majority of this stream was building, which I did a whole lot of, especially in regard to fences. So many fence supports, it somehow didn't drive me into the depths of insanity, probably because of how entertaining chat was. I got the fence supports all the way around this massive area, along these little mini cliff edges, and I started building up the walls. As you can see, this huge walled off area was about to be an entirely new place we could use for storage, mainly of dinos. In order to expand it in the way I wanted, I needed to demolish part of the wall and extend it elsewhere, so I did just that, and the wall was finally laid down. Some sides needed more walls or less, but the supports were all down and I was pretty tired at this point. So with that, I logged off and headed to bed for the night. Day 12 began and we went out to grab our metal, but unfortunately, this happened. I nearly died. Yeah, it's not just freezing floors in the air. Always be on the lookout for the mushrooms. While this was happening, Zev Hunter just casually did this. Oh my god. <laughs> Zev! Thank you so much, dude. Again. We got enough metal and went back to base. But then we found a level 140 male Ravager and knocked it out because reasons. The training dummy army at this point was expanding even more and they were looking pretty badass, not gonna lie. <laughs> Day 13, I did basically nothing. I was on for like five seconds. But the next day, day 15, we would end up doing quite a lot. I started off the day by observing Homer and Mo. These two monkeys were just vibing with their great upper body strength. I then broke Mo and made him look like he was hanging off of Homer for his dear life. I f***ing love this game. Anyway, I was waiting for Tyler to get on, because we were going to go get notes. So I guess I tried to wake him up by digging my climbing picks into his ceiling above where he was sleeping? He got on eventually and learned the ways of the hanging from ceilings. But after enough messing around, we actually got down to the mission for the day, which was just to collect a good few regular notes as well as some HLNA notes, which I had marked on my map. The three of us, as usual, got to work mindlessly searching for notes on, quite honestly, the most ridiculously difficult map to collect notes on. I can say this with complete confidence, and you cannot convince me otherwise. Amidst note collecting, we inevitably needed to venture out onto the surface areas. Tyler and Screen weren't very familiar with the surface, and so we all nearly died from Reapers. 
While I was trying to make sure nobody died, the Drake I was using iPhone was pushed down off the cliff and finished off by a Reaper, which for some reason jumped down and f***ing killed it. I was pretty pissed off by that, so I threw a glow stick at it. He didn't like that very much. Then I started shooting it with a crossbow, because I was still salty, and he tail whipped me. Then he killed Chips, Arc built my Featherlight. By the way, check out his channel. So at that point, I was really fucking mad. I ran back, grabbed my shit, found this guy, and fucking killed him, nearly dying in the process. These things are insanely tanky. Jesus, man. <sighs> I grabbed the stuff of iPhone's corpse and hitched a ride back home on Tyler's Drake. Oh, what's what's this big tree thing? I don't remember the way back to base. Uh, <laughs> then I took Cake Drake out, another rock drake that I still hadn't raised since I somehow didn't hatch an egg yet. But we got a bunch of notes in the portal room and fertile region in general. There's also a note in the fertile region cave, so we grabbed that one too. This of course wouldn't be a Journey's Core video if we didn't have a little short montage, so please enjoy what probably took me an extra three hours to edit. I wasn't joking. We reached about six hours on the stream, and at that point, we were all really exhausted. After collecting a solid, near, entire third of the notes across the map, that was about it for day 15. The next day, I started off by finally claiming a rock trick, a little baby female 165 that I named Blue T, only because it's got a little blue coloring on it. I then went ahead and crafted a bit of element across the charge node stations around the fertile grounds using beds that Shellborn had set up inside of these little shacks outside each node. Basically, if you set them up with boxes in each shack and the necessary resources inside them, you can just fast travel between beds and quickly craft element, place it in the boxes once it's crafted, and repeat. I had only started doing this for the first time on Journey's Core when Shellborn started doing it, and I found it to be the fastest method of crafting element so far on Aberration. We got a new super chatter, which I put the training dummy of on our little stone shack. We had so many of these at this point that I was just making an entire scene with the people who donated. It was, it was great. <laughs> now for this day, I decided that I finally wanted to build us a proper base rather than having all our main tribe shared storage in that tiny little stone shack. So I built a bunch of metal tile set pieces and got to work on that. The idea was that we'd have it on pillars raised off the ground, but eventually connected perfectly with foundations. This would be kind of difficult to accomplish, but possible especially thanks to tips from chat. So after all of that building, I took a bit of a break, got some notes, and we went ahead and decided to try and get impregnated by a reaper. As you may know, reaper queens basically have to be damaged heavily to a point where they start glowing, and then all sources of charge light need to be off for it to then be ready to impregnate. We did just that, got it stuck, and one by one, we got impregnated. While the alien was growing in my stomach, we got even more notes. I built a bit more on the new base, and we each went into our birthing rooms to have a fun time. My reaper, for some reason, wouldn't eat me, so I gave him a little bit of violent encouragement, and eventually it decided to finally grab a snack. Me. I named it Zev Hunter. While that was raising up, we got even more notes, mostly in the Molten Element region, since that was the last major zone for us. Did somebody say montage time? No? Oh, okay, well, too bad. Eventually, I was down to the last note that I needed. Tyler and Screen had all of them at that point, 
Well, at least screen, since it turns out we realized months later on Genesis 2 that Tyler was missing one on Aberration, but that's for the Gen 2 video. <laughs> Here was my reaction to getting the final note on Aberration. All right, y'all. Let's do it. I feel like I'm gonna Final note. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it. After getting all the notes, I checked up on the baby aliens, which were looking very happy, especially Zev Hunter with his happy little glow stick. But with that, I'd been streaming for over 10 hours and needed to stop. So I imprinted on Zev and was about to get off for the night, but had to do my respiratory therapy. And so I farmed for just a bit, checked on my now adolescent rock drake blue tea, before hopping off for the night. Day 16, done. Day 17 was really uneventful. I hopped on for like 30 minutes and crafted some element. Oh yeah, and the base was really coming along. I guess I built some of it off camera, but yeah. 11 days later on day 28, I finally got on as I'd been away for a good while. This was probably due to a combination of college and filming the last Scorched Earth survival stories at the time, specifically, I think, for Helena and Rockwell. But I just farmed some metal with screen, and that was about it. I was on just the next day, though, for day 29, and I went ahead and finally claimed a baby Megalo since the tribe was raising a ton of stuff. I named it Fuzzy Low. We went ahead and got a ton of mutton and pelt by chainsawing a dead, tamed Ovis that had tons of points put into health. I definitely recommend doing that. The metal base was coming along really nicely, and I finally started putting some actual utilities in it, which included a bunch of grills and refrigerators. Then I got this nice little bookshelf area down, crafted some extra element, which was all leading up to an eventual replicator, and I logged off. The next day was a stream day, and I vowed to finish the base and get some extra element farming and whatnot done so we could finally get into making some tech. So I did just that. Building was fun, I made a bunch of unnecessary structures just to make it look extra cool on the inside. Got more metal for one run, then did a second, oh, and black pearl farming, one of my favorite activities. I got the new industrial forge placed down in the base, and finally we had the resources to craft a tech replicator, which I did in Shelbourne's base, but I guess I'm only now showing. He didn't live with us being a bit closer to the lake. But I placed the darn replicator down, and after a lot more farming, he's just standing there, menacingly. And building, I finally finished the base. <sighs> Fun times. And with that, I was finished with day 30. Onwards! So I got on two days later, and at this point the base was pretty much fully fleshed out for the most part. Oh, except we didn't quite have vaults yet, so I fixed that problem by crafting a few and stacking them like so. I like to put tables and benches there to create this sort of stage for you to easily walk up onto to access the top vaults easily. I'm sure there's other ways of replicating this, but for me I've used tables and benches. We then took some time to move stuff from the old base to the new, and JESUS Zev Hunter was really growing up, being an adolescent at this point. On day 33 I got started with an irrigation pipe, which, compared to Scorched Earth, was incredibly easy. Oh god, I don't even want to think about that sandy monstrosity. Climbing picks are very helpful for building not just pipes, but structures in general, turns out. After getting the last of our utilities down, like a chemistry bench, I took my finally grown up reaper and farmed a bunch of meat, which I used a basilisk to carry. They have a ton of weight, and so they're really great for carrying back an insane amount of really any resource, plus they're especially fast when tamed. Now, uh, here's where things get kinda unfortunate, you might say. <laughs> Unfortunately this, along with many other creatures, would later go on to be destroyed by something catastrophic, but that's for later. We didn't know exactly what was coming at that point. My tribe and I had a couple established rules that were self-imposed, but not everyone understood them completely, and there wasn't really a lot of communication between all of us on how much those rules mattered and what it meant for what we would allow ourselves to transfer. See, specifically these rules related to transferring items to or from certain maps. Early on in the cluster like this, my tribe and I wanted to have things especially tough so we challenged ourselves by not transferring stuff over from previous maps until we had beaten both maps that we wanted to transfer anything beyond our characters between. This wasn't really understood, entirely agreed upon, or clear, and that was pretty much all of our faults. Anyway, Screen and I decided to go check on the island since we hadn't been over there in like over a month or maybe even two. So we transferred and found a cryopod graveyard, basically. A good 
two thirds or more of our dinos were destroyed effectively due to none of us going back over to the island to check on things at any point in between. This was a bit shocking and really sucked, but then we found that there were a few survivors, namely the ones in the base I had built, which still had gasoline in the generator. The reason the other ones died aside from our own inactivity was that they were relying on a tech generator which very quickly burned through the limited amount of element that we had on the island. After that fiasco, we transferred all the surviving creatures in their cryopods over to Scorched Earth for storage since that was a much safer bet given the infinite energy from wind turbines when they're in 100% wind. The next day I took my Megalo for a walk and spent some time just talking to the tribe about what had happened. While doing that, I built some extra stuff in the base, nothing too huge. The next day I checked on dino stuff and found out that there were a ton of ravagers and ovis bred up. We honestly just had a huge number of dinos at this point for breeding or farming purposes. That day I farmed a bit of meat and raised this little baby featherlight, which I named Chip. On the next day I farmed a lot. That's about it. But amidst farming, I built this basement area to house more grills to continue cooking the tens of thousands of cooked mutton that I was slowly becoming obsessed with producing just to feed the carnivores, which we had a lot of, as I mentioned earlier. Then I made tech daddy storages, discovered a great new way of carrying berries, and yeah, that was that was it. Now, four days later, my Ovis butchering obsession continued. Jesus Christ. Before you called the police, my spasming there was actually a method of hitting all the hitboxes of the Ovis to maximize the speed at which I was gathering mutton and pelt. Okay, now you can call the police. The entire day was just spent doing this. On day 45, we farmed and that was about it for two weeks, actually. 13 days to be exact. See, I got on next when it had been 58 days since we started. Again, if it wasn't obvious enough, this video and the other two have been in terms of real life days. At this point, it kind of hit me that we'd been at this map for just about two months and still hadn't killed Rockwell. Why was I farming so much instead of beating the boss? Well, we were held back by a lack of a couple of things. Namely, we still hadn't found an Alpha Reaper King Barb because it's RNG, so we spent a bit of time on the surface looking for Alpha Reapers with no luck, unfortunately. We later looked for even longer, but still found nothing. Though, on the bright side, I brought a seeker back as a pet. Megalosaurus can pick them up in their mouths, and it's kinda hilarious. I took the seeker down into the basement, and we locked it in. I tried to get out, but ultimately failed. Poor Jeffrey would later despawn when we got back, but we went out for one last search on the surface, and... Nope. Sorry, very anticlimactic. We found nothing, and my soul was crushed by it. But that's alright, because within about a week, we'd finally fight Rockwell. But before we get to that point, I farmed red gems with an Anki and a mushroom stew in the molten element region, I guess. This was so that we could craft a bunch of really good rock drake saddles. I didn't have a transmitter at the time, and unfortunately our allies teleporter, which was right nearby, wasn't functional because the generator was off, it was out of element. So basically I was stuck in the molten element region with 8,000 red gems in my inventory. But then I decided to do something really cool because I'm a cool guy. I put on a tech chest piece, causing immediate radiation poisoning, grabbed all the gems, and quickly flew to a supply crate as fast as I could while I was dying. Then a seeker came, and I didn't have a good weapon because for some reason I was still using crossbows at this point while having a fully functional tech chest piece. I chainsawed the seeker to death, which took like five minutes, and <laughs> uploaded all the gems at this crate. On day 65, I decided to read all the grad students notes for some reason, out loud. Nice. Screw these big alien things, bro. Yeah, I think Kugo does it a lot better. Screw these big alien things, bro. Anyway, this was mostly just a farming day, but just the next day would be the last one we spent on aberration. Largely thanks to Vard for donating us a reaper barb that she found. You're awesome, Vard. Okay, so the last day, we had everything ready, including a Megalosaurus army and Rock Drakes ready to go. All we needed was some Nameless Venom, so we farmed that for a good while, and in exchange for giving us her Reaper Barb, Vard was able to join as well as Potentia, two of our allies since they needed the Ascension. Once we had everything ready, we uploaded all our Megalos to our tech transmitter and glided down into the deepest part of the Ark. We wanted it to be epic so we opted for the Rockwell Terminal as opposed to using supply crates, which is also an option. We were all ready, put all the tributes in, and began the fight. 
All right, so just remember to get on the right dyno. Guys, make sure you get on your dyno, so remember where it is. And don't don't switch your armor yet. As soon as we get in, then you can switch your armor. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'm in. Um, I'm gonna swap my armor. I'm loading in. Yep. And remember to oh, remember to put on your put on your armor once you're in. As soon as you can. And uh, we no. can't shoot yet. I will let you know when we can shoot. Uh, we can focus the left tentacle first, and then the right one. So focus. Make sure you get on your dyno, and we can shoot it now. Go ahead and shoot that left tentacle. Ah, oh, I need to put my armor. All right, and then shoot the right one. And yeah, just keep going. an eye out for those balls. Is everyone on the dyno? Yeah. Make sure oh, you're that's a dyno. weird looking orb. And don't get in the range of the to Rockwell. So. All right. Oh, so the won. first two are, are destroyed, guys. We're gonna go clockwise, okay? Yeah, watch so out for those orbs. You can see oh. them now. Rock trays. We're going left. Interesting. Watch out for those orbs. I'm Megalos. Stuck on them. Yep, Megalos, stay Megalos behind us. Um, you're not going to go in front of us, Megalos. Just stay through behind us. Um, Rock Drakes will be in the front shooting the tentacles. And just keep an eye on balls as well. Um, guys, just everyone, whether you're on Megalos or Rock Drake. So do we... I think we fight at... I don't... I am fighting Turn up your music. Oh, yeah. I forgot music. <laughs> oh, this is loud. <laughs> Oh, oh you me. got slapped. <laughs> All right, just keep going, guys. Oh, that's so loud. Oh, we gotta stay behind. And yeah. just keep shooting those tentacles. Oh yeah, here's the four X, by the way. If you wanna oh, grab yeah. it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, if you like explore notes, go ahead and get, grab this. Oh god, we're so behind. We're so behind. <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing on foot? Oh, we're doing okay. I'm gonna smack again with the ball. Hold on, I want to get that 4x note. <laughs> you guys get the note? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Alright, watch out for those balls. Ow, that ah. hurt. I was dumb. Yeah, th we're, I was getting too close to the tentacles here, so we need to be further going forward so that we don't get oh, whacked. just one more tentacle. Yep, so this is a safe distance. Let's just stick back here. Um, oh, don't kill it yet. Don't kill it yet. Uh, uh, we need to be able to get to the front, so let's move up oh, and get ready to rush. Here. Uh, make I'm sure everyone's ready. Yeah. Nope. All right, everyone, uh, kill this tentacle and rush to the center quick. Okay. And the megalos and are then... already. All right, everyone, get to the, ah, the get start. I mean, get to the start as fast as you can. Shoot it. Hey, that left listening. one, and then the right one. And don't move ahead until we get this right one. And we start. Oh yeah, and you can see back there oh, okay. in the back left of the arena, it's shocked. Yeah. Hello, All right. That one's destroyed. I got uh, the dermot! I got the dermot! <laughs> nice. Got the uh, watch out for the balls, guys. And don't don't move too too far ahead. Let's just take care of this tentacle. All right, get to the front as fast as you can, guys. I'm gonna need some of my soup. So the megalos down there just keep Rockwell. eating the boss. Yeah. Yep. The other one's doing the majority of the damage to the okay, Make no, sure we're in between the two tentacles. Don't be too far on either side. Boy. All right, we have 18 minutes left. Yep, and we're about to be uh, at the 25% health mark. After There's a Reaper coming up from the front, game. just letting you guys know. Oh, from the front. So Megalos, you might need to move up. First. <laughs> just go ahead and break it. All right, run, guys. Just got a full on sprint. Sprint. Of course, it decided to, to defecate. Go, 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 go. Don't stop. <laughs> uh, hug the wall close so that you cover more ground. Yep, let's destroy the right oh, one yeah, first. Make this right one. Destroy the right one first. Uh oh. Brockwell is uh, chatting to us in the chat. He's like, just die already! <laughs> Please. <laughs> Brockwell just has like a little interface watching us kill him. <laughs> yeah, one of his tentacles is actually holding up a phone and he's watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, don't destroy this one yet, guys. Let's let's move everyone up. Yeah, keep Tyler's a decent bit behind, so watch out. Yeah. He's got the whole, like, Xbox 360 on the going on. The Kinect mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Namely's Phantom temporarily gives you Lamprey immunity, but it damages you. Oh. Which Lampreys are this map's version of leeches. Oh. I thought you just died if you hit Namely's Phantom. You just died instantly. I'm pretty sure it heavily damages you, like 80 yeah. damage. I wouldn't recommend I eating it, guys. I thought that was the potato chip that would instantly. Don't eat the Namely's. Please don't eat it right now. 
Imagine dying in the boss fight because you ate poison. Chug, 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 chug. Just eat some more. Chug a venom. <laughs> what do you say, Barb? Oh, can you make a rest? I wonder. Alright, we've got one last terminal or tentacle. Let's, let's get everyone up to it. Um, yeah, keep an eye on these balls. Yeah, I'm only on stam, so I'll be a little behind. Oh, yeah, it's behind us. Watch out for the Reaper, guys. I'm gonna go give him a key. Oh, he's already dead. Oh. Alright, let's uh, start moving up, guys. Don't get too close to the shock. Oh, and... Alright, let's destroy it. Alright, run, 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 run. That's oh. it! Oh my god! Oh, okay, everyone, everyone run to the front, quick. Oh, that looks so cool! What? Nice. Should we pod them, or what happens? Nah, they're gonna uh, go back to where we initiated the fight, so... Yeah, just the step back and don't do nothing. Oh, hi. We did this it! This looks amazing! <laughs> we did it! We beat Aberration, ascending our characters, granting them the Aberrant implant modification with the extra 15 levels, plus a bunch of skins and the trophy. Overall, Aberration was rough. It took us 66 real days, largely because of how busy my tribe mates and I were over the course of the playthrough and just how unlucky we were with finding things like Alpha Reaper barbs and good blueprints plus the unfortunate circumstances of having so many of our dinos get destroyed over on the island due to inactivity. But in the end, we did it. So what's next? I think you know what's next, but that's for next time. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It took many, many hours of editing and writing to get this out because of the sheer amount of footage. I mean, it was like 94 hours of it. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe for more of this kind of content, as well as survival stories and all the rest. Take care, everyone, and I will talk to you in the next video. Good luck, survivors.